Okay, now the first part of this video is to a workmate who says that why the hell do you use Linux? Linux just looks like Windows 95 or an old version of Windows. Um, well, firstly, I'm on about running software rather than looking at a pretty desktop all day long. You don't see the desktop. You see the software that you're running on it. What does it matter what the operating system looks like? But it's fair comment. A lot of the stuff that I use does have the old panel along the bottom and a menu that springs up from the bottom left corner. It's fair comment. I tried to tell him that the desktop environment is not Linux. It is just an option that you get on Linux. Linux is the back end. And yeah, I mean, fair comment. Linux Mint looks like that. That's uh, Cinnamon. This is Openbox on Lily Dog on MX. It's XFCE. You've got a choice of different kinds of desktops. Gnome Shell. Look, yeah. That doesn't look like Windows 95, does it? Does it? Does it really? No, it doesn't. Of course it doesn't. Mate, Linux is the back end. The front end gives you an option of multiple different types of appearances and paradigms to run your software in. Linux isn't any one particular desktop environment. You've got a whole bunch to choose from. But I'm going to show you a very recent version of Zorin OS, Zorin 17, which has just come out just simply because I believe it is one of the prettiest distributions within the Linux family. And um, I want to dispel the myth that you think every Linux looks like Windows 95 or XP or something. It's just not true. So this is it. This is it in its native basic self with its variation on the GNOME shell. Yeah, look. Oh, it looks just like Windows, doesn't it? We've got a panel along the bottom. We've got a menu on the left. Yeah. Tray on the bottom with all the shortcuts and your settings and everything there. It does look very Windowsy. Calendar there does look very Windowsy. But look, this is so much more. Because what you can do with it is absolutely stunning and phenomenal. So, okay, what can you do with it? Well, how can you make this less like it already is? Well, they give you a bunch of options straight out of the box. Go to uh, set sorry, appearance first. Okay, you can make it look various different kinds of layouts. Now, if you have the paid version, you get four extra ones, but you get these ones to start with. This one, which is the default, you get this one. You notice how it's changing along the bottom here as I go between them. Got icons, taskbar there. This one, go for the full on appearance there. This one, which is basically GNOME. I'm going to go back to that one. You can change the theme here. You can have it light, light or dark, depending on the time of day. I'm going to choose dark. One click and it's dark. It's even changed the background wallpaper for me. Now these accent colors is what colors you get in say here. And menus. I'm going to change that to gray. That's gone to grey now. Do you see what I'm saying? How about effects? Should we enable the animations? Yeah, we've got animations. Move a window about. Yeah, it's pretty static. Turn it to jelly mode. What do you think of that? Is that a Windows thing? How about the desktop cube? That's pretty good, isn't it? Windows? I don't think so, mate. Okay. Um, 
spatial windows switcher replaces out tab and super tab with a 3d window switcher okay let's go for that yeah just not a thing is it right there's the interface you can change the title bar buttons from over on the right stick them over on the left if you want the left super key by default this is your windows key by the way will bring up the tiling i want that to uh, start the menu now it starts the menu here okay desktop you can choose to have icons on the desktop yeah i know that's kind of a default for windows but we choose not to because it doesn't look cluttered that way but we can have our home folder there boom there we go have the rubbish bin on there if we want we can turn it off you can't on windows i don't believe mounted volumes network servers you know choose not to i mean you can change the icon size there small tiny large i think you get two options in windows don't you you can even change your default fonts really easy from here Okay, so I want to change the background. Now this is the GNOME shell background chooser. You get a bunch of wallpapers out of the box, very pretty. Nice, nice, very nice. Well, Pretty basic, but to the point. But I want to add one. So I've got my own setup here. Uh, where's the one that I built to just there? Okay, this one. We'll open that one. Then use that. Okay. How quick was that? How easy was that? Very quick, very easy very Linux. Okay, now to the meat and two veg of this video. I'm having a look around here. Now, Zorin 17, as you've seen, incredibly customizable, out of the box. Sits on the lap of Ubuntu 22.04. So the back end itself isn't gonna have an awful lot of support for very long. We're just heading towards 24.04, the new Ubuntu long-term support build is on its way very shortly, April time. So this may not be particularly cutting edge for particularly very long, though the Zorin team do do a certain amount of things with their system that breaks away from the Ubuntu backend. For example, look, we've got Firefox, as you've seen. Now with Ubuntu, Firefox is a snap. But if we get, where is it now? Utility or is it system tools? Why is there? Ah, oh, geez, I don't know where it is. So just type it here, DRM. Let's get the terminal up. And um, yeah, are there any snaps? This is Ubuntu based, isn't it? No snaps are installed yet. No snaps, no snaps installed. So they've got Firefox curated in their own repos, which I like. That's fantastic. There are no snaps on this Ubuntu based operating system. Let's open the software center. Right, what can you get? Let's look for something. I've not installed much of the stuff that I generally use. There's very little graphic-wise that I would use normally. Um, as far as sound and video goes, well, I've installed OBS Studio um, and VLC came with it. 
This is the cheese webcam, rhythm box, sound recorder, Bracero. Wow, CD burning software. I really wonder how many people actually use that anymore, but it's there amongst a load of other stuff. But this is just what they call the core build. If you want a fully fleshed out version of Zorin, it costs you, you have to pay. I can't remember how much because I've never even looked there because if you're going to start paying for free software. Well, with Zorin, you're not really paying for free software. You're paying for the work that they do behind the scenes, making this desktop environment something other than what it's based on. It's based on GNOME Shell, and GNOME Shell looks far different to this, so they do a lot of work. And, yeah, they should be rewarded for doing so. However, that's only if you're intent and serious on running this system for a long, long time. Now, this is the Linux world, and the Linux world comes with bountiful options. And almost every week, an alternative comes out that's got something that grabs your eye and makes you want to jump over to it. And Linux users, in the main, distro hop. Which means, jump from one version of Linux to another, to another, to another. And it's all because of the pretty Essentially, it's all because of the pretty, because the software you can get on it is very much the same between distributions. The only difference is what it looks like, and that's absolutely fine for people who like to stare at their desktop all day rather than use the actual software. Different distributions will package in their own curated repositories of software various specialist software but that you learn as you go. Who supplies me with this? Who will supply me with this? Who will keep it updated? Blah, 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 blah. But you learn. Which is why I generally stick to something with a Debian base rather than an Ubuntu base. For one, I've never really had an awful lot of luck with Ubuntu stuff. Barring Ubuntu Mate before it became saturated with the dreaded Snap container dApps. In fact, hobbled with the dreaded Snap container apps. The minute I couldn't get my Firefox from a dev file, I didn't want to know. I mean, I loved Ubuntu Mate, but I can't use it now. I could use it, but I would be very uncomfortable. And it feels like a proprietary operating system now, as do most of the Ubuntus. All right, so let's have a look at um, installing some software. What would I normally install? Let's look for the GIMP and there's no O in GIMP okay GIMP there we go the GNU image manipulation program basically an equivalent or an almost equal to Photoshop but completely for free now look we get the install options here it defaults to getting it as a flat pack from Flathub. But you can also get it from the Snap Store. You can get the beta from Snap Store. Or you can get it from their own uh, repositories or the Ubuntu repositories as an via apt as a dev file. So you've got the options. So always remember that if you choose to use this and you want to steer clear of um, container apps. That's a container app, that's a container app, that's a container app, and that's a container app. Why would you want to steer clear of them? Because they're big. And they, and certainly with snaps, they essentially set themselves up as a separate drive because everything is contained within that. All the dependencies that it needs to run, that's like for dependencies. If you're a Windows user, think of uh, the dynamic link libraries, the DLLs that Windows will install to help piece of software run. This uses the system's dependencies or will update the system's dependencies to suit the software that you're choosing to install via apt. Apt is the old way of anything based on Debian. In fact apt is also used on PC Linux OS to handle its RPM files so it's a very flexible way, and it's the traditional way, and it's the old way, and it just works. Okay. So you've got the options 
here. You just gotta have to click the down arrow. Okay, so let's get the terminal up again. Have we got NeoFetch, I wonder? Okay. No, we haven't. Okay. This, of course, is another way of installing from the apt repositories. Okay, right now let's run NeoFetch. Okay, so as you can see, for those who are interested in which kernel we're using uh, and small details about the operating system, um, so as you can see, it's Zorin OS 17, 64 bit. We're on a HP 15S FQ4. Uh, we're using the 62039 generic kernel. The machine's been running for 38 minutes. We've got 18 flat packs already installed. That's a little bit of a concern for me and probably why I would not continue to use this. I don't like container apps unless they're app images. I will use app images. Um, this shell here is running bash. It's basically the command line commands. It's bash 5116. We've got display resolution of 1920-1080. The desktop environment is GNOME 43.9. Very, very customised version of it. So fair dues for that. Uh, the window manager is Mutter. Um, you get various other different kind of window managers, so, such as XF window manager, yeah. Um, Openbox on LXDE. KWIN for KDE and I believe LXQt. Window Manager theme, the theme, the icons, the terminal is GNOME Terminal. There's our CPU and 11th Gen Intel i5, 8-core uh, 115.5.6.7. And the GPU is, of course, the built-in Intel Tiger Lake LPGT2 Iris. And, yeah, this is the memory. So, look, this is a different kind of Linux. Would I continue to use it? It looks very, very pretty. I could use it to go and show people what can be an option if you want to choose Linux as an operating system. But um, I'm happier, quite honestly, looking at the software I'm running rather than the desktop environment. And the software I'm running is the important thing, which is why I use Linux versions that look like Windows 95. Thanks very much for watching. Hope that's been of use to you and especially that certain particular workmate. <laughs>